So, Laura, it's so great to have you. How does it feel to be Extinction Rebellion's most popular activist? Oh, um, it feels a bit uncomfortable to take that title because there's a lot of people that have been there from the beginning um, and they've done, you know, a lot more work for a lot longer time than I have. So um, I don't really I don't really feel comfortable with that title and I, and I want the other kind of members to be kind of like... Um, celebrated for, the, for what they do because like I'm not the most knowledgeable or important member but it's just that I've I've got more media coverage so yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't like I don't I, I'm not that comfortable okay, in it fair enough. <laughs> obviously there's something that you do differently um you often protest topless yeah. do you think this is sort of the key to your media attention you've made a splash yeah yeah definitely I mean it's definitely the demographic demographic of people that I reach are kind of like men it's not an essential uh contribution to the cause by any means um it's just a way to uh draw attention it's the way i've made myself quite vulnerable and open and i've done it as a form of protest for other reasons as well um for women to not be shamed for their bodies and not be shamed for how they dress and how they present themselves not to be slut shamed surgery shamed makeup shamed fat shamed um, all different kinds of shaming that uh, we live in in this patriarchal society with a lot of misogyny um, and a lot of shaming of women into submission and I'd like to think of myself as a bit of like a beacon to, to say I'm not going to be shamed for any reason and it also works very well to draw attention to, to, the, to the climate crisis but I'm not just like a one cause pony in a sense I, I advocate for a lot of causes. And you recently went on hunger strike, uh, but I also saw yeah. on your Instagram story that you may have stopped hunger striking. Are you still planning to continue with the hunger strike or have you paused that for now? Um, I paused it. A lot of people were like sending me messages of concern saying like, don't do it, just um, you know, do something else. So um, I've listened to that. I've done it for 10 days now, but yesterday I was feeling um, extremely faint and uh, I basically like mildly fainted and I fell over and I like banged my 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 forearm and my leg and then and you initially said when you started the hunger strike that you were prepared to die for the climate cause is this something you still stand by um yes but people I was getting so many messages saying please don't do it please don't do it just think about um just think about being strong and think about yourself and think about the fact and they were saying don't be a martyr for the cause they they said like be it, you're much more effective alive than you are dead do you support the actions of the group Ex insulate britain who are sort of a break-off group from extinction rebellion yeah so everyone is like trying to get me on this one like try to get me to kind of give my opinion on this and like the bottom line is is that i i stay neutral i understand everyone's opinion on it in a sense i understand the people that are annoyed at what they're doing i understand how tragic it was for the lady that couldn't get to the hospital um that is obviously devastating and i my me myself i would never advocate to promote harm to promote um you know anyone getting hurt in any way shape or form um but i also understand their perspective i understand what they're advocating for i understand the spirit behind what they're doing. Disruptive protest has been a key a, a key driver in social change for, for this whole, many different movements in the last century. Women's rights, civil rights, you know, they were all disruptive in, in, in the way that they protested. So I believe to a certain extent, some disruption is necessary. I, I have a four year old daughter and I want the world to be a habitable, and healthy place for her to live and to grow up and, and live her life and achieve her dreams. And I am very, very worried that people do not take uh, environmental issues anywhere near seriously enough and they don't take personal responsibility and they don't uh, as much as so they your could. your family very supportive of your activism? Um, well, yes. They're, they're supportive of the things that I do. Um, they're not supportive of they're not that supportive of me going naked because it's very controversial and people give me quite a lot of hate and go, oh, why do you have to show your tits? What's the connection? Blah, 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 blah. And they just hate a lot uh, about it. Um, so my family probably isn't that comfortable. They probably don't want to see me naked. 
But and you're obviously very open about your personal life on your Instagram. Um, you sort of questioned your sexuality quite publicly on your Instagram. Recently, broken up with your boyfriend as well. How has that journey been? Um, so for a while, I've been kind of for the last six months, I've been really thinking about um, who I'm attracted to and what I want. And I've just, as I've grown older and older, and as I've got more mature, I've just kind of not been as attracted to men. Um, and I've been more attracted to women. I, I've broken up with him because I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. Because I'm confused. I'm confused myself. So it's not really fair. Okay. And you mentioned recently you have ambitions to be PM. Do you think the UK would benefit from a topless prime minister? Well, actually, I never said that. Oh. Um, it's just really. Weird. Uh, yeah, I never said that, and I've never said that anywhere on my Instagram. But because people were asking me a lot of um, the same questions, so people were basically saying to me. If there was, if you were a world leader, what's the, the top three things you would change? So I made a post um, saying the top three changes, but I never actually said um, that I wanted to be prime minister. I never said that I wanted to be topless prime minister. So they've just taken that and they've just twisted and spun it for some news. And then between your topless protests and Insulate Britain's blocking the roads, do you think that the ex all of these protest movements have been effective at convincing the British public to go greener? I think that people focus too much on their own minor inconveniences, apart from obviously the woman that couldn't get to the... But what they like to do is they like to focus on that and demonise or over-exaggerate that rather than focus on the actual issue. And the media propagates this divide rather than informing the British public about key scientific data and doing it in a way that reflects how urgent this situation is. They just like to hop on the controversial... Yeah, direct direct action is controversial. controversial. You're inconveniencing the lives of ordinary people. Not you, the movement. But, the thing is, but, not, um, but I have um, only done Extinction Rebellion. I haven't done Insulate Britain. Me, myself, I wouldn't go on the motorway because that's highly dangerous. Also, it, uh, Extinction Rebellion planned ahead of time where they were going to be. They knew Everyone knew that they were going to be in central London. Central London is filled with a lot of people that have got a lot of money to live in central London. People can plan their routes around it. They knew in advance that we were going to be doing it. And it was only for two weeks. And you have to see it in a way of you can either bring awareness to the environmental crisis or and have some disruption for a couple of weeks to bring that awareness. Or you can notice the effects of, of the environmental crisis, which are going to be a hell of a lot more than a couple of weeks disruption so that you can't go to bloody uh, Tesco on the bus or whatever within half an hour as opposed to an, okay, an hour or an hour and a half. My question for you, Laura, is will you be encouraging more young women to indulge in your style of protesting? Oh. It's not for everyone, you know, like it, it depends what you want to do. I'm my own person. I do what I want and I don't let people shame me and tell me what to do. So it's completely up to the individual person what they want to do. And I live in a, I live in a world, maybe it's a little bit delusional, idealistic, but I just live in a world where we don't get shamed for, for doing stuff like this. And people don't get, women don't get shamed um, and oppressed. So it's my, I do it, but as I say, I'm not encouraging other people to do it. Um, it's it's down to what they feel like they want to do. Thank you so much for your time. It was great to speak to you. Have a nice day, Laura.